Good morning guys, Mac here. Sorry I haven't posted much recently, I've been a bit tied up with the rugby in the Six Nations. It's been a pretty good event this year so far. Managed to get to all the home games, well, all the home games bar the one to come at the weekend. What I want to talk about today is storage. In particular, this thing. This is the Samsung X5 Thunderbolt 3 Portable SSD. Now what caught my attention about this was the performance stats. It apparently has read speeds of up to 2800 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2300 megabytes per second. Now that performance is pretty astonishing. It's not that far from what you get natively with the NVMe based SSDs in the Apple range for example. There is a question of course whether you need that sort of performance but personally I'm, I'm constantly having to copy around things like virtual machines and things like that so that sort of performance for me is really quite useful. So I thought we'd have a look at the performance of this device. I'm quite a big fan of the Samsung devices. I've had many of these. These are the T5 devices. This is a USB 3 one terabyte unit. Performance on these has always been great. I think there's a USB-C version or 3.1 version that's a little bit faster now, but it doesn't compare with what this one can do apparently. Now this is the new device. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger and it's certainly a lot more red. It's quite a bit heavier. Is it enough to annoy me? No, no. I mean, if that's going to be in your bag, I don't think it's going to bother anyone really. It's not a particularly weighty device. There's of course a, a Thunderbolt port. You do get a quite a short Thunderbolt cable. And I guess the looks of that, they're a bit of a personal taste thing as to whether you like it or not. But personally, I'm more interested in the actual performance of the unit. So let's get it plugged in. We'll see what the performance is like and we'll compare it to perhaps it's, it's old stable mate and some of the other stuff that I have. Right, I've got this device plugged in. The one thing I do want to show you quickly is that you'll see that it doesn't actually appear in my list of devices there. And the reason for it is I've got the hardware encryption enabled. Now, you might find this a little bit annoying. I've not been able to find a way to natively encrypt it using the macOS method of encryption. Instead, it uses a Samsung tool to actually enable the hardware encryption. Now that's fine, but what it means is, is what if you enable the encryption and when you turn the machine on, you have to go into this utility and unlock it for that drive to become available. Now, it's not a massive thing, and I guess it's a question for you as to whether you find would find that annoying or not, but I would prefer to use the native macOS encryption, but from what I can see, that doesn't seem to be an option. So I have to go through this process if I want to use the uh, hardware encryption. Now, I tend to encrypt absolutely everything just by default, so your mileage may vary as to how annoying you find that. Let's start by looking at some benchmarks. Now, I don't normally like just doing benchmarks because I'm more interested in the, in the real world performance, but just for the uh, sake of completion of this little run through, let's look at the benchmarks. So let's start with the internal drive on the iMac. Let's see what kind of performance we get out of that. As you can see, the drive performance on the iMac is a bit bonkers. I mean, the write speeds are, what, nearly three gigabytes per second, and the read are not far off that either. So let's now have a look at this Samsung X5. So as you can see, I'm getting about two gigabytes per second write speed, and about two and a half gigabytes per second read speed. So that is really impressive for an external drive. Now to put that in perspective, I also have one of the SanDisk Extreme 960s on this machine as well, which is that one. So let's have a look at the performance of that. Now to be fair to this drive, it has been used a lot and it has slowed down since uh, it was new, but this is still considered to be quite a fast drive. And as you can see, the Samsung X5 just leaves it behind. I also have on here the previous, the Samsung T5, which is that one. So let's try that. So again, the, the T5 is, is quite a, a, a quick drive in my opinion, so, and it's been my go-to portable SSD for quite a while. But as you can see, the performance is still way behind the X5. So realistically, the performance is actually up there with the internal drive on the iMac. Now, I did do several performance comparisons. You can see them here. So at the minute, sorted by read speed, I'm, I'm seeing a slightly better read speed on the X5 than I am on the iMac. But in terms of the write speed, the iMac's the faster. And just for comedy value, if you look down the bottom there, you can see the performance of a USB-C attached four terabyte spinny drive. Now it's not a great one, that's one of the Porsche design ones and it's only one of the two and a half inch drives. 
but it gives you an idea of how much faster that, that X5 drive is. So let's have a look at the real world comparison. Let's start moving some stuff around because that's where you really start to see the benefits of this kind of thing. So let me just close this down. One of my use cases is that I spend a lot of time moving around large virtualization sets. So let's have a look. I've got a virtual machine, which is my normal go-to machine, which is about 58 gigabytes. There we go. Now let's see how long that takes to move across to this new drive. There we go. We're going to copy it to there. That is pretty impressive. I mean, that's copying from my iMac internal drive to that external. Now, to give you an idea, let's also copy it to the previous version, the, the T5 drive. Let's copy it to there as well. You can immediately see that it, it is quite a bit slower, but, but as you can see, it's still quite a fast drive. Now, I suppose if you really want to um, see the performance difference, what we could do, let's cancel that. And as I can copy it to the four terabyte spinning drive and you'll, you'll really see the impact there. There we go. So we've gone from under a minute to over 10 minutes. Now, you know, you, you would expect that. I mean, the spinning drive is going to be a lot slower. But what about things like virtualization? Well, Let's have a look at see what the performance is like for the virtual machine actually running off that drive. Here we are in Parallels Desktop. What I'm going to do is just open that virtual machine that we just copied up to the X5 drive and we'll have a look and see what the performance is like on it. There we go. So let's fire this machine up and we'll see how it behaves. There you go. As you can see, it's very impressive from a performance perspective. So let's get logged in. And we are ready to go. So like I say, it, it is quite impressive. If you want to have a look, we can see what the resources are allocated to this machine. We have 12 virtual processors allocated and 16 gig of RAM. If we fire up, like for example, that uh, small spreadsheet with all the performance in, you can see and it's very, very usable. So what about things like snapshots? Well, let, let's go and take a snapshot. There we go, that's done. Now I'm gonna show you how to, what it's like to when you restore a snapshot as well, but for me to do that, what I'm gonna do is just remove Office from this machine. I'm not gonna make you sit through this because it's not very, very interesting, but what I'm gonna do is essentially just uninstall Office. We'll let that run, and then we'll restore the snapshot. There we go, that took a couple of minutes to do. We're not particularly interested in running through the process, but as you can see, Office has been removed from this machine now. So what I'm gonna do is actually just restore that snapshot so we can have a look at the performance. So I'm gonna go up here, we're gonna manage the snapshots. There we go, we're gonna go back to that one. And there we go, we're done. Didn't take long at all. And what we should see now is we've got Office back on that machine. So what about startup and shutdown times? Well, you've seen the startup time. Let's shut this down. And it's done. As you can see, it is bonkers fast. now. To give some comparison, what is it like if we run it on the um, on the T5, on the old version? Well, I do have that virtual machine copied to the T5, so let's have a look at it on there. Let's open the same virtual machine, but this time running from the older T5 device. Which is that one. There we go. So what I'm going to do is just fire it up on this T5 and we can have a look at the performance difference. There we go. I think you'll agree, it's still 
pretty darn fast. And I think that says a lot for the Windows 10 boot process compared to some of the older ones. But there we go. So as you can see, the performance on this is still pretty excellent. Now, of course, we can still do the the snapshotting. We can have a look at that. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is just take a snapshot. There we go. It's still going and it's finished. So what I'll do is I'll do the same as before. We'll just remove Office. Again, I won't make you sit through this. It's not particularly interesting. So let me get that done. That's all done. The one thing I will say, and perhaps I should have shown, is that the uninstall there actually took quite a while to do compared to the previous one. But let's restore the snapshot anyway. There we go. Off it goes. There we go, and it's done. And let's shut it down as well. All done. Now it is slower than the X5, which of course that's what you'd expect. The real question, of course, is whether you would benefit from all that extra performance because, of course, there is a cost associated with it. Let's have a quick look at those costs. So I've updated the spreadsheet here. These are UK prices, including VAT. So you can see the Samsung X5 comes in at the most expensive at about 44 pence per gig. The T5 is quite a bit cheaper. It's under half of it. And of course, the Sandus Extreme is also cheaper as well. So you are paying for that performance. I guess the real question is whether you're going to get the benefit of that performance. Now, the one thing I will say is that I don't generally perceive the performance during normal operation. So unless I'm copying something, a big file to it or from it, in general operation, I, I don't. it doesn't feel that much faster than the T5. Where I am getting a lot of benefit, though, is the way that the unit scales. So I can have a lot more virtual machines running from that drive before the performance starts to degrade than I can on the T5 or on the SanDisk Extreme. I have noticed as well on video editing, I can go and edit my 6K or even 8K footage directly from that drive. I can't do that on the T5 or the 960. Well, you can, but it's just, it's it's not very smooth and it, and it gets very irritating. So what I normally do is just copy it onto the iMac and, and do it from there. But I can do it from that Samsung X5. It's like anything really, you'll need to come up with a, a justification for that cost for the performance because if you don't get that benefit from from that performance there's probably no reason on spending the money and perhaps you should go for one of the either the sandisk or the uh or even the older t5 but but for me this drive is going to be really useful and it's going to open up my storage options so it's worth it for me anyway i hope you found that interesting storage isn't a particularly interesting area and it's certainly quite hard to make an interesting video about it but i thought some of you may find the information useful.